Welcome back to Chemistry 30. So this is part two of the MS 2.2 intermolecular forces videos. Um, so we looked at dispersion forces, those forces uh, that arise due to random electron movement. So remember, um, it may happen that all the or most of the electrons in a particular atom uh, meet on one side, and during that split moment in time, you would get a slightly negative area which automatically means the opposite side is going to be positive. And then uh, if that comes close to a neutral molecule or atom, it forces the electrons here to be pushed over to this side, making this side negative, this side positive. So we would get a slight attraction there just due to, I like to call it random electron movement, okay? So dispersion forces are attractions between an instantaneous dipole, so it becomes a dipole or a separation of charges at an instant, and then it induces or causes a dipole in a neighboring atom or molecule. And that positive negative attraction is the intermolecular forces that hold those molecules close to each other. So that causes the attraction between them. So those are called London dispersion forces or simply dispersion forces, attraction between those. And again, due to random electron movement, key things to note, this happens with all molecules, whether they are nonpolar or polar. So you have random electron movement. And uh, the, the tendency of electrons to move around and collect on one side of an atom or molecule is called polarizability. The ability to become a temporary dipole or become temp uh, temporarily polarized. And polarizability increases when valence electrons are further away from the pull of the nucleus because that means they're free to rotate. They're free to move around. See, these electrons are held close to the positive of the nucleus, so not a lot of freedom. But the further they are out, the less hold the nucleus has on them. Also, when we are talking about larger atoms and larger molecules, there's more electrons to move around. And if they happen to collect on the same side, well, that'll lead a larger negative area on that atom and causing another positive area. So farther from the nucleus, as well as more electrons, and of course, more electrons come with larger molar masses of atoms. So factors affecting London dispersion forces, that kind of leads into that. The shape of the molecule also plays a factor. So if we have a long, skinny molecule, such as the one you see down here, that tends to be more polarizable than, let's say, a, a spherical molecule. And it makes sense because, hey, and in, in real life there, we have, all of our batteries are cylindrical shapes. One side positive, one side negative. So if you can separate the charges easy, easily, that uh, means it's going to be polar. So uh, long, skinny, cylindrical type molecules have stronger dispersion forces than shorter spherical ones. And of course, we also have increased surface area with that. And as mentioned, larger atoms have larger electron clouds that are easier to polarize. And there's also more electrons there. And this, so what that means is that the strength of dispersion forces tends to increase with increased molecular weight or mass. So the larger the molecules are, the more easily, easily polarizable it is. So if we look over here at this example, uh, list the substances uh, carbon tetrachloride, carbon tetrabromide, and methane in order of increasing boiling point. So boiling points, so boiling points occur when liquids go to gases. So what you're doing there, what you're really doing when you're boiling something is you're taking something that has relatively close together with liquids and uh, making them spread out. So you're breaking those attractive forces. So you can almost think of it as that. Breaking attractive forces because they're being held together and in this case we're looking at dispersion forces so we're trying to pull them apart we need to overcome the forces 
overcome forces. So if we have larger forces of attraction, the more, the higher the boiling point will be. Overcome forces. All right, so if you take a look here, now going by what we saw, um, we can take a look at molar masses of all of these. I'll maybe use a pen here so we can see this. So carbon tetrachloride and uh, carbon tetrabromide and methane. So if you look at the molar mass, the molar mass, the molar mass, that's how we usually did it with the big M, 153.81 grams per mole. And over here we have uh, 331. 0.61 grams per mole. And then good old methane, it's only 16. 0.04 grams per mole. All right, so hey, so that will give us an indication. So the smallest one, methane. And then the next one, carbon tetrachloride. And lastly, CBr4. So if I go this way, increased molar mass. And then what happens there, of course, is also increased dispersion forces. So there's a large force of attraction. The larger it gets, the larger these molecules get, the greater the dispersion forces and if there's greater forces holding them together we can then say increased boiling point because again boiling point melting point you're trying to overcome these forces of attraction and if we have dispersion forces here we need to overcome those forces and i can also say here the increased uh, dispersion forces due to due to increased, oops, voice crack, increased polarizability. More electrons. Can move around before closing that bracket with larger molar masses. So the larger the molar mass of a molecule, the more electrons there are, of course, and the more electrons, the larger the forces we could have. If all those electrons happen to be on one side of that atom or molecule, so when given, uh, and of course, when given uh, similar molecules of similar molar mass, polarizability tends to have the larger dispersion forces. All right, so that deals with dispersion forces. So we should be able to look at some of the questions in the assignment. So rather than going through the rest of the notes, it'd like it be a good idea to go through some of the questions that, are, that pertain to dispersion forces, polarizability, etc. So you should be able to do question number one. Question number two, yep, polarizability, we should be able to do that. So A, B, C, D. Also, you should be able to do question number three. And, uh, oh, this is like one with the notes, if you look at the picture. Question number four is another one we should be able to do. So right at this point, now that we're done talking about dispersion forces, just jump to the assignment and do the first four questions there. Then we'll come back and look at uh, dipole-dipole forces with the next video. All right, we'll see you again.